Hello, my wildlife friends. I'm so happy to have you all with us again today as we go through our, our cams and look at what's happening here. We've got a baboon. It's the Africam show, of course, everybody. It's live, it's interactive. You get to send me all your questions and your comments, and we get to see what's happening on the cams and learn a little. Yeah, we've got a nice big baboon. So these are Chakma baboons. And this one looks almost as if it's staring right into us. <laughs> you can see that it's got a really long face, nice broad snout, or broad nose rather, long snout, and these eyes that are placed in the center of its head to give it a nice binocular vision. The whole troop is around, we did see them. It's wonderful to watch them interacting because uh, they have such complex social structures. Not, not in the sense that, there's, um, that it is exceptionally rigid, although it is, there is some rigidity to it, but just the way in which they interact with each other because relationships are so important to them. Anyway, we'll jump into that in a moment, but um, first, let's get through some hellos. Aussie Jan too, Aussie Jan and that coffee. Aussie Jan's uh, spicing it up this uh, this afternoon or this evening for her. And uh, she's got a new recipe with melted cheese and toast. I <laughs> hope you enjoy that, Aussie Jan. Tammy says, good morning, Trishala and everyone. Good morning, Tammy. Rolling trouble, of course. Thank you for reminding me, rolling trouble. You say hello, Trishala from Washington State and a happy Lion Day. Yes, a happy World Lion Day to all of you. Um, so this uh, World Lion Day, that is, was, um, let's say, constructed or brought about by um, Big Cat Rescue, which is an organization. Um, and it's a day to just remind ourselves about lions and take some time to chat about them, learn about them, maybe watch a documentary on them, whatever it is raise awareness because their population is in decline. Thanks, Rolling Trouble, for reminding me. Uh, and of course, if you have any lion questions, send them through. I see the peeps are out and about now, up and about rather. Showing us their rumps. So rumps are a great way with baboons to be able to tell the sexes apart. Um, obviously with females, um, there is a, a space between that, that calloused bottom there, right? Um, and that's obviously their vaginal area, that's their birth canal, and so males don't have that. Uh, so that's an easy way to tell them, tell them apart. But obviously males are also substantially larger than females. And you can see that this is quite a big boy that we're looking at here. Uh, Victor Atamani, 
you say hello from Finland. Oh, Victor, can't say I remember your, oh, look at this, look at this. this is very cool. So there, that was a female that came and sat next to him now. Sorry, Victor, I was about to say that uh, I'm, I don't recall, maybe I've done too many shows, I don't recall anybody from Finland before, but maybe I'm just being silly and not remembering. But thank you for joining us. And then we have Amber, co 2013 you say happy wednesday happy wednesday to you too amber thank you for your gift of time and knowledge my absolute pleasure our absolute pleasure and pleasure here at africa so there you can see the gap did you see that so the cushioning on that female's bottom that callus looks like two fleshy bits whereas with the males it's a continuous um callus unfurred area Very, very nice. Dia NC, you say, hello, Trishala from Seattle. You're looking forward to the show. I'm so glad that we've got Zygote, of course, saying hi, Trishala. Um, and Rox Matin, you say, I love watching the animals and the different cams. Isn't it? It's so interesting. It's such a great way to learn and it's such a great way to, you know, keep your curiosity burning. That's what I love about wildlife. That's what I love about learning about the natural history of, of animals, planet, the planet in general. So just before uh, I keep on going with all the hellos, there's so many. To, um, I just want to say that when this male sat here and then that female came along and started to groom him, you may have noticed that she put her behind towards him first. She's kind of saying to him, come on, give me a smell. I'm maybe an estrus. Um, are you interested? Because the alpha male, which this male is likely to be, the alpha male or even just high ranking males are a top prize for, for mating because it means that you can offer your young the protection of those animals, the alpha animals. Cindy Shelton, you say hi everyone, you hope your week is going good. Yes, it's been excellent. Thank you, Cindy. Hi, Shreyas K. I hope you are well. You say hello to Shala. I hope that you're doing well too. Thank you. I am Shreyas. Afternoon, one and all. Greetings from a very hot UK. That's Sukhi V. Oh, Zygote pointing out that the Cape Turtle Dove is calling in the background. Zygote always picks up the, the Cape Turtle Dove. Um, it goes, work harder, work harder. And now we are looking at some elephants not working very hard. Hardly working. That's the joke that I missed. <laughs> I absolutely love watching the elephants on these cams. Having a splash about. You can actually see that the water level has dropped quite a lot. And that means more mud. So for the elephants, it's not too much of a problem. They can be quite fussy drinkers. So what they would prefer to do in water like this is they may find an area that's maybe undisturbed where most of the sediment has settled. And then they'll kind of skim off the good water from the top. And then they'll give that a drink. But they will almost never, unless things are really desperate, will not go to drink muddy water. They'll splash it on them, no problem. They'd much prefer to go into a dry riverbed water until they, they hit a portion of the water table and they can you know some water can well up in the hole that they've that they've dug. Oh, look at them go. You can actually see the one in front of us that looking a little bit browner than the others because it hasn't thrown the mud onto it this time yet. That one's kicking up some good mud. Hopefully it'll give us a bit of a splash show as well. Oh, this is one of my favorite things. I know that we're all focused on the elephants that are in front of us, close to us, but on the left of your screen towards the back you see them streaming through and i want you to just watch and i hope that they will do it 
the kind of excitement that builds when they reach a waterfall. There's huge bodies of them, of theirs, that retain a lot of heat. It's like uh, they get so excited at this opportunity to allow themselves to cool down, maybe get a good drink of water, maybe get a swim in. I mean, the, the weather here certainly looks a lot better than uh, where I am in Cape Town. It's rainy and overcast. So I'm sure that these elephants are quite warm. Oh, look at them come through. It's, it's so majestic. It's so iconic. And you never really truly understand the size of an elephant until you have one of these moments like this, where you see them approaching and then they're getting bigger, they're getting bigger. You expect them to be fairly large, but sometimes elephants come really, really close to you. And all of a sudden you realize you actually can't look at them with your neck in a normal position anymore. You've got to pick it up and look really high. Suddenly you realize just how large they are and just how small you are. Sorry, I was busy giving my story and um, our elephant in front who was brown now kicked up a good amount of mud that it's very happy with and is continuing to mud bathe. Oh, this is great. The face is pushed down. I'm going to use the tusks now to loosen up the good mud. That mud on the face and the forehead between the tusks. Oh, magnificent. Oh, this is stunning. I hope we can look forward to some dust bathing after the mud wallowing here and mud spraying. And they'll really get nice and caked up. And that lane, you say, oh, what a beautiful picture. The reflection is stunning. It really, really is. Wonderful blue sky and the elephant in the reflection. Oh, this one's got its bottom in the mud now. Up again. Exactly rolling trouble. You say an early parade coming through. Absolutely. You can see some of those in that parade, as we say, have their trunks held up high. And those, their trunks are so very, very sensitive, not only to touch, but also in, in terms of the sense of smell. And so they can pick up cues about who's at the waterhole, who's around, by smell as well. There we go again. Trunks up, up in the air. What do we have here? So much communication going on. Visual cues, olfactory cues. Olfactory means a sense of smell. Or the way in which they process smell. And then of course, being able to actually talk or create sound, vocalize. Oh, the stone is having the time of its life. Hi, Teresa Bishulin. You say these webcams are amazing, aren't they? Just they allow us to really get a glimpse into life in these beautiful areas of of South Africa. You can watch elephants or any animal really. Just getting on with being themselves. I think that's wonderful. Gigi, you would like to know, can they ever get mud stuck up their trunks? Um, while I can't say for certain because I haven't had the privilege of uh, of seeing up an elephant's trunk after it's been mud baiting, mud mud baiting, there we go. I can say that's probably likely. Oh, look at this guy! <laughs> The little one on the left sat on its bottom. So Gigi, it's very likely that they would get mud up it. But 
there's so many muscles, nerve endings, it's so sensitive that they'd be able to tell if it's causing a blockage, anything like that. And considering that it is mud, that means that if there's mud in there, there must have been water close by, so it can rinse out its, um, its trunk. Oh, keep your eye on the littlest one that's in the middle of this, this little pocket. It's really having a grand time. So this elephant on the extreme left found a little puddle that is undisturbed and it's been drinking water from that puddle. That's like the exact type of, of um, water that I was looking up just the top. Touching, 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 where's the best water? And that's where it will drink. Oh, look at that one. I get so excited when I see elephants, but I'm just gonna I'm gonna whisper for a little bit so we can actually enjoy the sounds. Look at that one there that's kind of sick itself. Beautiful, beautiful sound. For me, this is. Ooh. You know, with everybody trying to cramp into one wallow, um, there's no doubt that there's going to be the odd foot stepped on trunk, maybe. But a couple growls and trumpets. Love Thai 5, hi. You'd like to know, you said, are the new elephants coming from the same herd that was already there or a different one? So herds um, can form separate little pockets or separate groups, but they're still the same herd. They just move, uh, some might move a little slower than others. Look at this little one. Really getting all the areas it can without too much effort, just plonk your whole body in there. So uh, to, to answer your question, um, it could have been from the same herd, it could have been a couple bachelors that ended up here first, um, that are slowly separating from the herd. Here we have a nice big bull that is following this herd. And you can also see there's a couple elephants in the background as well. So it's likely that this is one herd, they just move at different paces. They don't always stick together strictly. Oh, Shreyas K, you say, and these are not your favorite, but they're certainly fun to watch, especially the younger ones. Absolutely. <laughs> the sound of any fun, right, Jeff? Yeah? Storm, hi Storm, you'd like to know, aren't most herds female and males are solitary? So herds are matriarchal, which means that it is a, a matriarch, it's a female and their offspring. So it can be grandmothers, their daughters, their daughters, their granddaughters, etc. Um, but basically it's adult females and their young. Their young would be mixed mixed sexes. The males, when they are of age, so somewhere between 12 and 15, they'll start to get out of the herd and then they'll 
they'll form bachelor their own. And it's only when they're a little bit older that they become really solitary, like that large male that we saw, that large bull coming. males that are solid for elephants <laughs> and for guinea fowl we're scattered just in front of us here oh jay shiloh you say worse than an ellie having a stuffy nose a giraffe with a sore throat at least a, a jay shiest for the bad joke <laughs> I'm I'm great at bad jokes, or should I say I'm terrible at bad jokes, which means that I'm great at them. Uh, I'll I'll be a, a good good audience. We're starting to move off just a little now. You can see that some of them are, are quite dry. And back to the question about whether this is a separate herd. So these ones have come from the other side of the cam that we weren't actually looking at originally. So they might have been here first. You can see that the one in front there has still got patches of, of uh, moisture on it, while the others are fairly dry. When I say dry, I mean that they probably have been dust bathing after being in the mud. So that's why they appear dry. But underneath that dust or sand, it's nice and moist. So they come in in drips and drabs. They don't always arrive at the waterfall at the same time. But a great way to tell if it's a single herd or a different herd is where they move to from the waterfall, different directions or not. Oh, love. We are at cat eye pan now. Again, elephants. But this time, We've got two Egyptian geese as well, or a pair of Egyptian geese. Oh, lovely. So you can see that the water at this pan looks a lot less muddy, a lot less kicked up. So this is an ideal place to actually have a drink, as opposed to mud bath. I love watching how curious other animals are around elephants. Curious, sometimes uh, a little bit scared. These Egyptian geese are keeping their eyes on this bull. And he would have also completely noticed them as well. Elephants I mean, this is completely subjective, but elephants seem to have a really good understanding of um, or self-awareness, an understanding of their space, their body in that space, and a great awareness of what's going on around them. And I say that because of my experiences with elephants, but like I said, that's subjective and that's my, my human interpretation of what I see, the way that they carefully move, the way that they are um, approach a waterhole with caution if they see something that they're unfamiliar with, whether it's the vehicle, whether it is um, an Egyptian goose that's having a fight with its mate. They're always very, very aware. Fate in the bush because, you know, it's about survival. So if you're not very cautious and you're not super aware, you may not notice that there's, I don't know, a leopard behind the bush. So the senses of animals are really, really well developed to suit their lifestyle and to suit their survival needs. I'd also like you to take a look at this elephant bull's eyes. I wonder if you can notice that they're almost barely open. When it lifts its skunk up again to drink, we'll have a look.
when you see that. The eyelid is kind of a little bit droopy. So this is a sign of a really relaxed elephant. Elephants that are anxious, nervous, in any way distressed, you'll often see that their entire eyes, their eyes are quite wide, so you'll see the whole eye. And if you're wondering what that white spot is um, in the eye, that's just an accumulation of gunk. Unfortunately, elephant, well, not unfortunately, it's just the way that they are. Um, elephants don't have a, a lacrimal gland. So that's the gland that helps to drain our tears, right? Um, and that's why our eyes can stay clean. But elephants don't possess this. And so sometimes you'll see what looks like wet patches around their eyes or coming down their eyes or tears or this accumulation of gunk in the corner of their eyes that because they, and that's because they don't have good drainage. And it might be a result of, um, of their ancestry. And so they share ancestors with um, cetaceans. And when if you're a water mammal, there's no need for you to have ducts to clear your eyes because you're in the water. So you, they may look like they're crying sometimes, but they're not. Oh, we've got some Egyptian goose modern dance happening right there. An interpretation of uh, the elephant drinking, perhaps. Oh, Jay Shiloh, you'd like to know, do elephants sneeze? Um, I can say that I've heard what I thought is a sneeze, and I know what you might be imagining, perhaps them, you know, sneezing through their trunk, but I haven't heard that. It's more like a, gosh, it's hard to describe. It's more like a blow, like it goes, if that makes sense, like in the way a dog does. Um, that being said, when sneezing in general, sneezing requires basically uh, two components, a nasal component and lungs. So if an animal has um, lungs like we do, internal lungs um, that create a negative space when or negative pressure when we breathe, if it has that, then it can sneeze, technically can sneeze. It's just the way that it comes out may be a little bit different between the species. Hi, Lisa White. Thanks for joining us. You say, oh, I do enjoy the bull elephants. I do too. Some of my best sightings have been with elephant bulls. <laughs> a bit of spray as well. So, so peaceful. Love a beautiful elephant bull. And I love it when they spray water out of their trunks. <laughs> now for something a little bit different. We've got a new. A lovely vulgarbeast. You know, I re never really appreciated vulgarbeast um, until working in the bush. So as a South African, we know what a wildebeest is. You know, you see them all the time. Oh, you don't see them all the time, but they're quite common. If you go to, um, like, you know, reserves near you that don't have any predators, you'll often see wildebeest around. You might see them on farms, things like that. And so it's a common animal to see. Um, but I never really appreciated them until I started working out in the bush. And they really are beautiful, beautiful antelope. I always think that their tails, the hair on their tails, uh, it looks like a wig almost. It's it's just so beautiful and silky and long and straight as if it's been treated somehow. We've got some horn bulls. Yuck. Looks like yellow bulled horn bulls jumping around. Maybe a red bull. It's hard to tell.
I love the Encoro cam. It feels like home. So you'll notice that this wildebeest is on its own. And that's because the males are territorial. Just once they're mature, they tear before that they'll hang around in um, breeding herds with a couple of mums and their youngsters. And this guy seems to have found himself a nice patch of uh, territory. Oh, ter territory. And this is for any animal. A territory differs, differs from a home range because a territory is defended. Ranges are not defended. Defended home range um, allow for other animals of the same species and even of the same sex to move those home ranges. When we talk about territories, it means that the same species is based and it is defended against them, or this or the same sex of that species. So, a male leopard will defend territory other leopard against other female leopard. Territory needs to encompass some important things. It needs to encompass this. That's the most important thing. So in places where there's abundant resources, you may find that territories are smaller because animals can can sustain themselves in a smaller area because there's so an abundance of um, of resources. So will the beast, its territory for or within its territory, it's looking for good grass to graze on and good water, because that also means that if Within his territory, he has these great resources. Females will come into his territory, and when they come into his territory, he may be able to mate with them. So it's such an important part of lots of animals' lives, and we hear the term territory um, and home ranges. We hear these terms often, but sometimes we don't really know what they mean. And the territory is defended, and it encompasses resources. So beautiful. You can also hear some wonderful birds in the background. Um, it sounds almost like a like a laser gun, <laughs> you know, laser tag gun. Want to be at least pew pew pew. Um, and those are magpie strikes. So cool. Oh, that's what zygote says as well. Can you hear that? Pew pew pew. I'm really bad at bird calls, everybody. Anyway, gosh, that time went fast. I blame you. Um, I have a line debut and spend created by learning about lions just a little bit. And, and you can be learning about the cave lion or the American lion, Pandera atrox. Those are prehistoric animals, but I do love them both. They're very interesting to see where and how how lineage come to be. Anyway, it's that time. So thank you so much for your questions, your comments and your and your company as we moved through the camps here in South Africa. All right, everybody. Goodbye and we'll see you again soon.